Hi, I'm Shanuj Pansu, and this is the third part of the series, Low Cost Brain Machine Interface for Controlling Mechanical Systems, under the guidance of Professor Alexander Haber at RIT New York. In this part of the series, I'll be telling you how to control a mechanical system such as this one directly from MATLAB Arduino interface. So let me show you the experimental setup that I have here. This is my power supply. This is a stepper motor driver for the stepper motor. Breadboard with simple connections, Arduino connected to my system, and a custom built robotic base with a single degree of freedom rotation. Let's see how this works. I simply turn on the power supply and give the command to start rotating. We can see the rotation. Now, when I give a command from my system, the direction reverses. Let me teach you how it all works. Okay, so let's begin with the Arduino code first. Okay, so the Arduino code for establishing the communication between MATLAB and Arduino. To illustrate the main ideas, we use an example of receiving the data for controlling the stepper motor. It receives the sequence such as A, B, C, D and the greater than mark, where A changes the direction when a 1 is returned. B, C, D is a sequence of number defining the number of steps. I haven't included that in the code yet, but it can be implemented very easily in the code. The greater than mark is the end marker. For example, 0, 3, 3, 4, 5 greater than simplifies that 0 signifies no change in direction. 3, 4, 5. This can be interfaced later in the code such that the stepper motor moves for 345 steps. Now we are defining some variables. const in numcar 5, the number of characters that we want to receive. Similarly, we define the array, of th array for received data and the indicator for new data. When new data arrives and receive car is full, new data is equal to true. Now we define other, other variables such as in dire equal to zero for direction, in distance equal to zero, and car n marker equal to greater than mark. Now we define the pins and variables for the stepper motor. Reverse switch equal to two, driver pulse for seven, driver direction for six, PD pulse delay period 500, in speed equal to A0, I've connected a potentiometer at 8 0 to control the speed of the stepper motor and set the boolean set direction as low to set the initial direction. Now beginning with the setup loop. Here we start with serial.begin9600, we need this for serial communication. Then we set the pin mode for reverse switch at output, pin mode for driver pulse at output and pin mode for driver direction at output. We also attach an interrupt, digital pin to interrupt, reverse switch, ref stepper falling. This is the interrupt for changing the direction of the motor. Here the interrupt handler has been defined later in the code. Void ref stepper, which is set dir equal to opposite of set direction. That is, it basically changes the direction of the code. Now coming to the void loop. First we check if there is anything in the serial port. So if serial.available greater than zero, we execute three commands, record, execute, and send back. These are defined later in our code and I'll explain it there. Now we check the direction of the server motor. If or the command that we receive from MATLAB. So if dire equal to equal to one, we digitally write the ref switch as low, else the ref switch as high. That is whenever the direction is received as one from MATLAB signal, the direction of the motor would reverse due to the interrupt that we have attached over here. Now we have to set some stepper motor parameters. Here pulse delay we map analog read speed 0 to 1023, 2000 to 50. That is we determine the pulse duration using potentiometer. Then we digitally write driver direction as center. Now we create a pulse, digital write driver pulse high, delay microseconds of pulse delay, digital write driver pulse low and delay microseconds. Now coming to the record function. Void record, we take the static int index equal to zero. This is the index for filling in receive character. This variable does not need to be static and can be a global variable. Then car i car, received character. That is an output of serial.read function. Now while serial.available is greater than zero and the new data is false, 
we set r car equal to serial dot read delay and if r car does not equal to n marker and the index value is less than equal to 4 we set the receive car index equal to r car value else receive car index is set as 0 to terminate the string index is uh, has been reset at the counter index equal to 0 and new data is set to true now coming to the execute function here car tmp direction that is temporary direction 2 this one stores the direction and then temporary steps 4 this one stores the number of steps if new data is true temporary direction 0 is receive car 0 else temporary direction 1 is slash 0 that is we end the string direction equal to atoy temporary direction the atoy function converts strings to an integer for n j equal to 0, j less than 2, j plus plus, the temporary steps j is equal to receive car j plus 1. And similarly, the temporary steps 3 equal to slash 0 to end the string. Again, distance equal to add or temporary steps. We add a delay and the new data equal to false. Now, to free the buffer, if something is still there, we add a while loop. While serial dot available is greater than 0, serial dot read. Now, to check that if in if we have received the function or not, uh, to check that in MATLAB, we have added a void sendback function. That is it, uh, serial dot print distance sends back the distance. The number can be read from the serial monitor or from MATLAB. And serial dot write slash r. This is the CR terminator for MATLAB. And at the end, that was the interrupt handler that I had included earlier. Now let's go to the MATLAB code. Okay, so now let's get started with the MATLAB code. First, we call functions such as clear all, CLC, and all this. It is a good practice that we call these. Now, we have to define the main communication parameters. So we set Arduino equal to serial, USB modem 101, baud rate, and data bits. That is, we create a serial communication object on port. Now, this can be different for your system. Like, you can use a different port on a Windows computer. It might look something like COM1 or COM2. To check the port, you can go to the Arduino editor, click on Tools, and under the Tools menu, there is a port option. There are a number of communication ports that should be displayed, and you can select the desired result. Now we have to define some other parameters, such as the input buffer size, the timeout values, and now we set the Arduino input buffer size to the input buffer size over here, the timeout value to the timeout value defined here, and now set Arduino terminator as CR. We are now ready to go. We simply open the communication channel between Arduino from the code f open Arduino. We give it a pause of 0.5 seconds to initialize. Now, to run to start the communication with Arduino, we only run this part of the code. Now, to start giving commands to Arduino, we can run this command. Since it has a one in the direction parameter, the direction of the motor should reverse. 960 is the number of steps that the rotor should rotate if we have included that in the code. I have not included that in the code yet, but it can be easily added. And if we run this line, since it has a zero in the direction, then we should see no change. If you haven't connected a motor yet and just want to see whether your Arduino and MATLAB is connected or not, after giving a command, you can simply run this line and you should see a result in the command window of your laptop. You should see the values 1, 2, 3 if you, if you run this command and that means that your Arduino is receiving the signal and is able to send back the signal as well. Now whenever you are done, to simply close the communication between MATLAB and the Arduino, we simply run this command. The link for the GitHub page on which both the codes for the Arduino and MATLAB would be provided in the description below. Let's Now let's see how the MATLAB and the motor works together. Okay, so we simply plug in the Arduino to the system, upload the Arduino code, we open the communication between Arduino and MATLAB, we can switch on the power supply and we can now control the direction of the system using MATLAB. We can see the system has started rotating. Now when I give 1 as the direction, it will rotate. Here I have given it as 0. 
when I run this, nothing happens. But whenever I give a one, it changes direction. And that's all for the video today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.